Hey guys, this is part two of my introduction to classes and objects with Python. And in this video, I'm going to talk about how multiple classes and objects can interact with each other in Python. Now, if you're new to these concepts, I'd recommend my introduction to classes and objects videos first. And in this video, I'm going to use the same example as part two of those two videos. So if you already watched that one, you can just skip over to this time in this video to check out my Python code. Okay, first of all, here are the class and objects we created in the last video. We had the robot class with three attributes, name, color, and weight, and one function, introduce self. And then out of this class, we created these two objects, R1 and R2, containing these attributes. For example, R1 had Tom as the name, red as the color, and 30 as the weight. And on top of that, we're going to create this class called person, representing a person, of course. And it's going to have these attributes, name, which is going to be a string, personality, which is also going to be a string, and is sitting, which is going to be either true or false. And then if this is true, that means that this particular object, this person is sitting. And if it's false, that means that this person is not sitting. And then out of this class, we're going to create these two objects. The first object will have the name Alice, personality aggressive, and is sitting will be false. And the second object will be Becky for the name, and her personality will be talkative, and is sitting will be true. So this person will be sitting. Now, just a quick side note, in case you're not familiar with these values, false and true, they belong to a special data type called Boolean. So if you have numbers like these, 0, 4, 1, minus 13, and so on, they are integers. And they're referred to as int in Python. And if you have collections of characters like these enclosed in double quotes or single quotes, they are strings, of course, or str in Python. And if you have true or false, they are boolean or just bool in Python. Okay, back to my main point. We're going to put this person object in a variable called p1. And we're going to put this other person object in p2. And the person class will have two methods as well. The first one is going to be called sit down. When you run sit down, for example, on p1, the is sitting attribute will be turned true because this person will be sitting after running this function. And then the stand up method is exactly the opposite. So for example, if you run p2 that stand up, the is sitting value of p2 will be false because this person will not be sitting after standing up. And here, how can we show the relationships between these two sets of objects? For example, what if we wanted to show that p1, this person, owns this robot, r2? We can do that by adding an extra attribute to the person class. Let's call it robot owned. And then if you want to show that p1 owns r2, we can set the robot owned attribute of p1 to r2. And then if you want to show that p2 owns r1, this robot named Tom, you can set the robot owned attribute of p2 to r1. Now let's see how we can do that in Python. Here we have the class that we defined in the last video called robot. It had a constructor in it plus a function called introduce self. And then we also learned how we can create objects out of that class just like that. For example, r1 equals robot tom red 30 and then the same thing for r2. And now let's create a new class here. This is going to be called person, of course. And then it's going to have a constructor. For that, you can just write def two underscores in it, two underscores again, self. And then let's have it take three additional arguments on top of self, npi, for name, personality, and is sitting. And then you can set this new object's name to n by writing self.name equals n. And then you can do the same thing for personality and is sitting. And then this class will have two additional methods on top of the constructor like we saw earlier. The first one is sit down. 
This is not going to take any arguments except for self. And to implement this, you can just write self dot is sitting equals true. And note here that true here is capitalized. And then you can do the opposite for stand up, stand up self, and then self dot is sitting equals false. Again, the word false is capitalized here, and that's just how it works in Python. Let's run this cell to load this class. Once this class is loaded, or once this block of the code is run, you'll be able to create a new object out of this class. You can do that by writing p1 equals person. Note here that the word person is capitalized. Double quotes Alice, comma, double quotes aggressive, comma, false. So this new object will have Alice as the name, aggressive as the personality, and false as is sitting. Let's do the same thing for P2 by writing P2 equals person, Becky, comma, talkative, comma, true. Let's execute this block of code, and these two objects have been created. Now, like I said earlier, let's say we want to show that P1 owns the first person, owns the second robot, R2. To show that, all you need to do is, like I said earlier, set the robot owned attribute of P1 to R2. You could do it in a couple different ways. One way to do that would be to change the constructor and then have it take maybe an additional argument, let's call it R, and then here you can just say self dot robot own equals R. That's one way to do it, but you could just write here p1 dot robot own equals R2 as well. And that defines a new attribute in p1 called robot owned and sets it to R2. Let's just do that. And uh, let's just do the same thing for p2 as well. Let's say p2 owns R1. So we're going to write p2 dot robot own equals r1. Let's execute this piece of code, and you'll be able to access this robot owned attribute in say p1, just like you can use any other attributes. So here, if you write p1 dot robot owned, that will give us r2, and then further if you write dot introduce self, this is the same thing as saying r2 dot introduce self. So this should print out, my name is Jerry, because that's the name of R2. Let's see if that works by running this block of code. And it does. We see my name is Jerry right here. OK, you'll be able to find a link to my sample code in the description below, both as a plain Python file and as a Jupyter Notebook file. And uh, actually, I'm not sure how many Python videos I'll be able to make in the future, because right now I'm really focused on my data structure series. If you want to learn more Python though, I'd personally recommend two of my online courses, which you should be able to take for free. The first one is called Get Ready for Your Coding Interview, and it's on lynda.com. This course is basically for practicing your problem solving skills with Python. And the second course I recommend is called Introduction to Data Visualization with Python. And this one is on this website called Pluralsight. And this one should be good if you're interested in things like data analysis, data science, or machine learning. Both of these courses are taught by me, and you should be able to take them for free by signing up for their free trials for 7 days or 30 days. I'm going to put links to those courses in the description below in case you're interested, or you can just go to csdojo.io to find those courses. Okay, as usual, thanks so much for watching my videos, and I'll see you in the next one.